So one question I often get asked is how you can get characters that maybe aren't immediately obvious on the keyboard. So I'm thinking things like international characters, for example, or symbols, which which maybe exist in foreign languages um, but aren't traditionally there on a standard English keyboard. Um, and there's actually quite an easy way to do this. This In InDesign, you have a panel called the Glyphs panel. Now, like all panels, you can get to it under the window menu, uh, and it's under Type and Tables just here. The other way you can actually get to this one as well is from the Type menu, because Glyphs are available there as well. In, in both cases, they open up the same panel, um, which is the Glyphs panel here. And in the Glyphs panel, you can see all the characters in the font you're on. So I'm on Minion Pro here, for example, as you can see at the top. And it's showing me the entire font for Minion Pro there. Um, so I can scroll down and I can literally see all the characters in this font, including all the international characters, for example. And as you go down, they're all in there, both in lowercase and in capitals. Um, so you've really got a really good selection of stuff to use there. You also get a few little symbols in the end. Um, some fonts won't have every character in there. Depends who's built the font and who's made it. Most of your standard ones will. And some fonts are just full of all sorts of interesting stuff like wingdings, which which has all sorts of kind of crazy symbols in there. So if we go down to the bottom here, for example, uh, and just scroll down a little bit so we see wingdings, just to give you an example here. And you can see wingdings is just full of all sorts of little symbols. So if you just want to put a little symbol of a, a telephone or something in there, that could be quite a handy one or some arrows, for example. And you can reuse these things like bullets as well. So there's, there's a variety of uses for these, uh, which can be quite handy. So if I go on here, let's just, we'll go for the entire font and we'll go back here to something like Minion Pro, which is a fairly standard font. Uh, if I can find it, where have we gone? There we are. So in here, if I wanted to use one of the international characters in there, for example, I could go down here, look for the character that I want, um, and you can start to see some showing up down here. And uh, do you want to see a character I recognise? There you got a, a capital E there with um, an accent on top. If I double click on that, you can see it pops it up on the page over here equally. There's the zero with that on the page. And if we just zoom in a little bit so we can see these a bit better, you can see they're coming out absolutely fine on the page. Um, obviously, it does rely on you recognising the characters and knowing what you're looking for, um, which in this case, I'm just randomly picking a few out. But it's nice and easy to do that. If you have certain characters you know you're going to reuse a lot, what I would then do is build a glyph set in there. And to build a glyph set, you can go into here and you can do a new glyph set. So there's probably a few in there already, but I can go in there, do a new glyph set, and we'll call it Friday. Click OK. And then to add some of these characters to that glyph set, I can right click, add to glyph set, and I'll go down here and pick out Friday. So I can go in there and do the same with one of these E's. Let's just try and find something. Uh, add to glyph set, Friday. And we'll go do one more. Add to Glyph Set Friday. Now, I'll be really honest, I haven't got a clue which languages half these characters even come from, to be honest with you. Uh, that's not my expertise. But we've got those all in one Glyph Set now, and I can go in here and I can say Show, and then I can, instead of looking at entire fonts, I can scroll up a little bit and go to my Friday Glyph Set there. And that now shows those three characters that I added to it. So it makes it a lot easier for me to then reuse those and just double click there and reuse those rather than having to search through a font that might have a couple of hundred characters in there. I've, I've got the three that I wanted. You might have a few more than three. So if you're doing um, documents regularly, for example, if you're an organization where you have an international office and you're often asked to kind of do documents that maybe contain international characters in people's names or things like that, this is a really nice, easy way to do it. And your glyphs panel can just be kept docked up the side here. Um, and you've got options in there to edit your glyph sets, view them or delete them if you want to as well. So you could always go in there and delete particular glyph sets if you wanted to as well. So it gives you plenty of options in there for working with those.